Sounds good. And all right, I believe we are live. No, we're, we are live now. Finally, we're live. Are we live? Yep. I think we were tuning in. We were watching the Oscars. Does anybody? Somebody comment. Do you got us? He's looking to I'm, see. I'm here. Now I gotta find. Uh, so I guess I'm gonna put the, the YouTube up on my phone so I can see what people are writing. Yeah, right. if you yeah if you can do that, make sure you mute it. Um, or you, you'll get, we'll get feedback from the audio. I'll mute it. All right, for those tuning in, I'm Scott. I'm Bart. We are the Scotch Test Dummies. With us tonight, Mark, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey everyone, this is Mark Kaufman. Um, you'll know you'll know of me from the Whiskey Whistle YouTube channel. Really great to be here with the gentleman from the Scotch Test Dummies. All right. That's right. What, what are we drinking? Canadian. Should I, should I say where I'm from? Yeah, I'm sure. From Canada. I'm from Winnipeg. Uh, however, I actually live here in uh, Seoul, South Korea. That's where I live and work. And uh, can I also say hello to my mom? Yes. You bet. Hi, mom. <laughs> Look at me. I'm live. <laughs> and I'm alive. Uh, wonderful. <laughs> Hey. Okay, so we got what are we, uh, doing? we got West Cork, 10-year-old Irish whiskey. Bart, what are we going to do? We're going to test it! Test it! <laughs> I love that. Very good. Now, your bottle is a little bit different than mine. We commented on that. That is interesting. Well, and I noticed uh, I was in the liquor store today, and they had another bottle on the shelf, and it's got your packaging, Mark, so it must be just a new labeling that's coming okay. out. Yeah, they. Uh, I gotta it's admit, they've got the same same style. I love the uh, I love the etched out uh, packaging, like the uh, the the label. Yep, it's like you're looking right cool. at the island. But I gotta admit, your your white label definitely jumps out a little bit more. Yours looks a little bit antique, but that can be pretty cool too, right? Yes, very much so. Cool. All right, now real quick, gonna... go ahead, go ahead. Well, and if we have time, also, um, I should have looked it up. When I get a chance, I'm going to look it up. If we have time, we are going to get to one. We had we had a shout out. Somebody, one of our uh, viewers, noticed or wanted us to do Johnny Walker Black Label, and then I got offended because I realized we've never done Johnny Walker Black Label. Uh, you should be offended. Yeah, I know it. I couldn't I'm believe surprised. it. The block. You guys yeah. are nearing 300, right? Have you hit 300 already? Almost. Uh, almost. But almost. We've done we, the double black. This will be probably a quick Double review black. tonight, and we will give this the we will move in. We'll do a solo review of this also on a pre recorded show. Most definitely, most definitely. Now, you sir, well, I'm tuned in. Yeah, you you do have a very interesting international thing going on. Can you explain a little bit of your Canadian roots, and then if you're able to, what takes you over to Korea? Absolutely. Um, well, so as I mentioned, I'm from Winnipeg, uh, you know, uh, to make a long story short, my dad immigrated uh, to Canada from Denmark uh, with my granddad, um, I guess about 1954 or thereabouts. Uh, my mother's side of the family from Ukraine and Poland. Mm. Yeah, I think my mother is either second or third generation Canadian. Uh, great grandparents uh, immigrated from um uh, from Poland and Ukraine way back then. So uh, my mother's maiden name. Um, born and raised in Winnipeg. I lived there, uh, well, 30 years and then decided I wanted to change things up. I quit my job. I was working in the uh, fashion industry. Decided to uh, come to Asia kind of, kind of on a whim. Really? Uh, kind of partially just to experience a different culture and language. Um, and the great thing with Korea is you can, you can work quickly and um, uh, you have a lot of, a lot of free time because you, you come here with uh, no family or friends. So uh, basically I, I worked about eight hours a day and spent the rest of the time studying Korean language and learning the culture. And then two and a half years later, I met my wife. And the, fun, the real funny thing is, my old boss said to me, when I told him I was going to Korea, he said, you're going to go to Korea and fall in love. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm not. Uh, I'm not really attracted to Asians, I said. <laughs> um, and, yeah, anyway. 
about two and a half years later, there there I am uh, falling in love with uh, a wonderful woman, my wife, uh, Une. I mean, she might be watching now. I don't know. Uh, she's got to look after the kids, so it's kind of hard for her to do both. Sure. Well, tell her to go uh, turn us on because we need all the extra viewers. Yeah, we need more. We viewers. need all the viewers. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll tell her. <laughs> uh, anyway, so um, at the wedding, that old boss he came to uh, to the wedding and reminded me of his uh, premonition that I would would fall in love and get stuck uh, stuck in Asia forever. <laughs> so, uh, but I think the story here in in Korea, I think it's going to come to an end. Maybe next summer, we're thinking of moving back uh, to Canada uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, it's really hard for middle-aged married women to get decent work in, in Korea. Uh, there's a bit of a, uh, let's call it a huge glass ceiling, and also quite a bit of, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll just I'll use the word as it is, missionary. It, it's uh, some discrimination against, uh, against women, in fact. Uh, there's a wage disparity, and um, it's the job market's just terrible for women uh, 30 and up who are coming back to work after having kids. Hmm. So anyway, interesting. Now, years ago, I wasn't in yeah. Korea for long, but I uh, I was in Tegu for a couple weeks, and we did catch a uh, train down to Pusan at one point in time, and then wow, back up to Seoul. What were you doing here? Um, I had a fiance that was uh, in the army. I was actually in the army reserve and she was stationed for a year and she was in Camp Walker in Tegu. And uh, so, okay. yeah, I flew in and uh, needless to say, the trip didn't go too well. I actually, Bruno would love this. I found out she'd actually met another GI. <laughs> so I had to, oh. I had to, I had to fly across the world to find that out. But overall, wonderful, wonderful trip. And that was where, like every once in a while, I know we have Juke Kim as a fan, and I can only break out a couple things, but I learned uh, Anyang Haseo Azumani or Adishi and Kamsamida. That's great. So, now, uh, I, don't know, I don't know how many Koreans have tuned in at this point. It's, uh, it's the lunch hour. So I, I think I've got around about eight or a hundred Korean subscribers. Mm. Um, but the thing is, I don't know if they're in the middle of their work day or um, in a business lunch. Monday is a busy day uh, in the work week, as uh, as as everybody knows in the world. I don't have to say that, but sure. Uh, so who knows? But why don't why don't you say that again? Uh, say the the hello part. All right. Come some da to she or. Uh, uh, oh, now I'm free. Very first one. Azumani. Anyang. Oh, Anyang Aseo. Anyang Aseo. Yes. Right. So uh, that's hello, how are you, right? Yes. Um, Sorry. And then come right. Sunday. Let, let, let me say hello to our Korean viewers as well. Anyang Aseo. Sitong Hei Jujodo Kamsanda. Thanks for tuning in for all the Koreans who are watching, if there are any whether you're watching now or whether you're watching this after the fact. Oh, and you say that so much better than I do. And I know come so many dollars. Thank you. Right. That's perfect. Uh, perfect pronunciation. Oh, well, there was banged it. before I went over, there was a gal I'd met at a, well, she owned a little Korean restaurant. And when she found out about six months before I traveled over, whenever I would come eat there, she would make me learn like a new word. Like, she actually, the first thing she taught me was water is mule. And she said, it's kind of like saying mule, but mule. So is, am it. I still it's saying it right? Is it, how is it said? It's, uh, mule, yeah, mule. You got it right. Mule. Okay, I'm saying it too slow, mule. mule. So, but yeah, so I, I learned. Mule, I learned to speak quite quickly. Yes. So I learned several things before I went over, which were helpful. But yeah, it was a very, very interesting mm. trip. And uh Probably my funniest story was when I first landed, I had to catch, I, I can't even remember where I flew into, and then I had to catch a little flight to Tegu. But I was waiting, and I was just kind of standing around, and I'm about six foot six, and I and I real quickly noticed there were small children that were like pointing at me and saying something, and they were getting 
like swatted like nobody's business by their mother. And I finally sat down on the floor because I literally was getting kids in trouble. Like every two minutes, some kid was getting <laughs> like slapped in the face. I don't, I'm sure they were saying, wow, look at the, you know, white giant or something. I, I don't know. That's what Bruno calls me. You call me the white giant, right? <laughs> How tall <Yeah>. are you? 6'6". 6'6", <laughs> six, six. Six, six. yeah, that's pretty tall. Uh, how, do you know? Do you know how many centimeters that is? Oh my God! Um, I think two hundred. Well, probably. What? How many? Uh, see, now you. Get, I had a German buddy that had it all figured out for me once, but I can't remember what six feet six inches. How does that convert? Somebody out there, I'm sure, is converting it. I'm sure, yeah. Someone's got a calculator. It's two point yeah, we'll five four. Uh, I think. Yeah, six foot six inches. Calculating what? into centimeters. Oh. Because I know I, know. I, I had a German. I'm posting links. Um, I'm posting links for this now uh, everywhere. Um, so hopefully that'll help a little bit. All right. Well, That's pretty cool. You can. Um, while while you're doing you can send links out. Hey, while you're doing that, just a couple of things that come in. Um, Eric Gilbert says, hopefully Mark doesn't collect board games. <laughs> oh, come because on. Because he thinks you guys might really go down a rabbit trail. Oh, we would. <laughs> and 22 Catch 22 wants to know how to say hello in Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny you say that, you know, because there are, there are sort of dialectical um, phrases that <clears throat> differ from province to province. See? Um, in the West, you'll find a lot of, uh, a lot of Canadians from the Western part of Canada say, how's it going? <laughs> I, like, I can do that one. How's it going? How's it going? How's it going? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Now we how's should going? probably, and then you, you, you can add the A. You can add the A. How's it going, eh? <laughs> Poser. <laughs> uh. I like the another, A. Another real uh, Western Canadian Id idiom uh, when you like something is bitchin'. Oh. Bitchin'. <laughs> That's very 1980s for us. Is that an ex is that an expletive? Yeah, uh, it could be, but yeah, really back then it's not as much. But when Scott had a mullet, that's what he used to say all the time. <laughs> hey uh, Mark. Uh, <laughs> Triple cap and whiskey in the six want to make sure you have your bottle back away from the edge of the table. Oh, they're worried you're going to drop it. Actually, it's pretty close, but uh, my knees my knees are far away from the table, so <laughs> I don't think I don't think there's going to be any smashing today. Very good. And you got your. All right. it looks like you got your cup of water and your spoon ready. Are you ready let's, to get into the table? Well, let's go on, Mark. Do you know? I, I know you're real good. You're good uh, with a lot of the details sometimes on the distilleries. What do you know about West Cork? Give us a little bit of information. Uh, well, I know it's fairly new. Actually, I didn't do a lot of research yet um, uh, about the distillery itself, but uh, pretty new. West Coast Distillers, uh, sorry, West Cork Distillers is the, uh, uh, the company name. Um, and I also noticed that they have um, uh, just recently started opening up a new facility, uh, I guess, in the area, something like 2.4 million pounds facility is being built uh, currently. So I think they've got their hands tied. I've noticed that their Twitter account's been silent since about November. So uh, those, uh, I think it's a, there's like three friends. It seems like there's always three friends involved in these, uh, uh, in these um, endeavors. So there's three friends that got together and started this. Uh, another cool thing that I wish I could find uh, is a bottle that they make called um, uh, the Pogues. So the, the, the rock band, uh, the Pogues, there's a whiskey dedicated to them. Okay, I didn't know that. That's from the same distillery? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if they, uh, maybe they bought uh, some grain whiskey. I think it's 50% malt, 50% uh, grain. Um, uh, so I don't know whether they uh, bought the, uh, the grain from a third party or not. But um, anyway, so... That's apparently a real hot seller. I bet. Good band, too. And I was just looking. What about you? What, what have you found out about this company? Uh, just about what you did. I looked them up on Twitter and saw it was three 
three friends that started it up. Um, now about the West Cork, uh, 10 years ago, this is a single malt Irish whiskey and it is bottled at 40%. I don't know if yours is any different. Yeah, 40%. And uh, I, I get some Korean information on the back here uh, and it's funny sometimes uh, to sell anything for consumption in Korea you have to put full disclosure of, of ingredients however um, uh, this doesn't say anything about any additives so I, I had some of this last night compared to a couple other um, uh, just some other things that I have this was actually the lightest in color so, but, you know, I wonder, is that uh, natural or not? But uh, the important thing is it tastes really good. <laughs> and um, even though it's 40%, I think it's uh, it's pretty potent. Should I pour mine? Yes, yes. please. We're going to start describing the nose. Scott. I missed it. I missed the pours. Oh, you're well, good. No, well, we, we, we were had ahead ours, of you. Yeah, we had ours poured while we were waiting. Okay. Lord actually uh, imbibed on a couple. I did. <laughs> I gotta catch up then. Yeah, it's his bottle, so I figured I had to pour early. So, what do you got on the nose? Now, Scott? Uh, Dan E commented real quick. He said he figured it was from Jameson or Middleton, and it isn't. It's um, this is a separate or a uh, single distillery, basically. Yeah. Independent. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm pr pretty sure it's their own, own their own juice. Uh, I don't know if anybody can tell. Tell us different. Not that we're seeing on the comments. Uh, the nose, I get a great vanilla cream and a tangerine. Mm. Marshmallow. Mm. I'm with you on the marshmallow. Yeah, me too. Nice citrus sweetness. Now, I always get this with uh, Irish whiskeys. Um, I wonder if the washbacks that they use are uh, made of uh, like a fresh pine wood or something, but I always find a little bit of like a fresh pininess to it. Um, whether it's this or Jameson or I've tried Hyde and a couple others, I always come back, come back to this um, forest, northern forest kind of pine scent. Yeah, I agree with you there 100 percent. It's got it definitely has that uh, almost like a pine needle. Mm. Interesting. And then I do pick up that marshmallow. And you're right, it's clean and it's crisp. It smells very light. But that pine scent's definitely the first thing I get. Mm. Huh. Now I think a little bit deeper down it moves to that marshmallow and then it moves kind of into that into that marshmallow cream. Hey, by the way, too, for those tuning in, Mark is in Seoul, South Korea. You are 15 hours ahead of us. So you are looking at uh, That's right. 1225 in the afternoon on Monday there. I'm having a lunchtime uh, dram today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dipping in That's... there already. i got to get in here then. Yeah, get in there. Lunchtime dram with the butterfly, pink butterfly. Now I took some notes for this quite a long time ago, and I gotta show you this. Show this to you because it's really funny. Does this ever happen to you when you're taking notes late at night, and uh, uh, it becomes just like scribble because you fall asleep? <laughs> <laughs> fall asleep or get near the bottom of the bottle. Anyway, but there is something interesting here. It says uh, "fun dip candy stick." Do you guys get fun dip down there? Yes. Candy stick to lick, lick, and then dip in? 100%. Now, I agree with you 100%. It's that vanilla part of the stick, that subtle mm -hmm. vanilla that's on the candy yeah. stick. Yep, I agree with you there. I'll, I will get that every once in a while, and I'll describe it, and 100% concur with you on that. That I'm is so the vanilla. I hear that. And um, uh, I wrote also here, like this is from last night, um, some custard, like custard cream. And oddly enough, um, uh, cracked pepper, cars, table water. 
when you open the package of those crackers, mm -hmm. uh, the ones with pepper. I get the pepper note. What do you have, Scott? Anything? Um, nice tropical fruit, uh, definite sugar and a citrus sweetness. I mean, I can tell you there's like a citrus pear tangerine in there. Mm -hmm. There's also some candy powdered sugar type stuff going on. <laughs> uh, oh. some, a light oh, oak. palette here already. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, he said you're on yeah, the palette. The, you mentioned, um, um, tropical fruits and I wrote here, tropical fruits papaya i can just slightly read that from my old notes yep i would i would agree with that yeah mm -hmm. it's very it's a it's really rich mm -hmm. uh, and even for a 40 percent, it, it feels more like it's 43 maybe 45 percent i agree uh it doesn't taste like it's 40 percent. yeah it doesn't taste watered down at all and for a, for a 10 year yeah, old that's as well, what I was going to say it's very in 10 years. Yeah. It's very full, very rich. Yeah. They bottled this at the right time. Now, do you get any spices on the palate? You're going to say cumin? <laughs> no, I haven't gotten anything yet, but don't give up on me. Hmm. I might get a little, I, I Almost a hint of clove near the finish for me. Mm. Um, it lingers. I get a little, a, little, a little astringency on the cheek. I agree. Mm -hmm. So I found a little bit of ginger and some kind of a sweet spice. Um, and I wrote here apples cooked in butter. Oh. Mm. So buttery apple flavor. That's good. I do get a little bit of butter on the taste. Mm. Mm. And vanilla caramels. Mm. I'm still getting a, a, that good butter coming in. I can see where you're talking about the butter apple. Is anybody trying it with us, Scott, that's got any comments? Uh uh, all, uh, George Kaplan, and I know he's got the West Cork as well. He says allspice. Uh, Chris Kaufman has a small hint of cinnamon. Uh, he also, <laughs> That's my brother. Oh, is it? Chris is? Hey. He's yeah. watching. Go, Chris. Uh, and he's, he's pointed out mango flavors as well, which I yeah. agree with, that, that uh, tropical fruit, the papaya, and the mango. I'll have to say thank you to my brother. Yeah, go, bro. Does anybody know when this distillery was uh, erected? We do have. We've had a couple. We've had a couple of comments on that. Um, Whiskey Hunter pointed out that West Cork malts its own barley and sources local spring water. Mm. Um, nothing on how long they've been around. What about on the bottle here? Um... Yeah, we got a little marketing on the back, but I don't think it covered that. Malted in Montreal, he, he points out he wants to be on the show and he wants to do Fireball. Oh, boy. All right. We have to – I promised him a shout-out. Yeah, you did a <laughs> – Oh, no. Well, you kind of did a live stream with him. You guys uh, gave did. it an attempt anyway. What? That, that attempt? was um, uh, Baker's Bourbon. So what happened, you guys? So to everybody watching, we did uh, Canada – Whiskey Rami Suave. He does a great channel called Malted in Montreal. Make sure you have a look and subscribe. Don't just watch. You have to click that subscription button. That's right. Yeah, we prefer prefer a lot of thumbs up too. So thumbs up, yes, exactly. Although we've got a couple of people that are even thumbing down Scott when he just says, Hey, 30 second bit, we're gonna be live on Sunday. Boom, 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 and he'll get a thumb down. <laughs> Thumb down. Yeah, you'll get a thumb down for an announcement. I'm telling them, you know, you got to you got to make them more entertaining. You got one, Mark. You got a thumb down on your <laughs> intro video. Well, what do you do? Yeah, Actually, you know what? I like I like the thumbs down and I like the dislike button because uh, you know that creates some controversy. Um, and yes, I know. I know that when when we when we bring this out. 
there's going to be all kinds of uh, thumbs down for Johnny Walker. Oh, <laughs> Johnny oh, Walker geez. brings out the malt snobs. Wow. And see, I like the thumbs down because I figure they're staying in there. They're weighing in. And if they just keep watching, we're going to win them over. We're going to win them over eventually with the shenanigans that we got going on. Like that. Like my mom likes me best. That's in reference right over here. Now, let me put Dan E. comment. Um, Dan E. says that he gets tropical fruit in Irish, in, in Irish whiskey. I think he's, he's generalizing, which I would agree with a lot. A lot of Irish whiskeys, to me, I get a, a tropical fruit in, and I don't I know if it's the single, if it's a single pot still, the triple, triple distilling, you know what it is with it. Yeah, or like I was wondering, is it the washback? Uh, is it the particular yeast that they use, or the fermentation time, or or the cut? Uh, do they use a a smaller cut than um, uh, than others to hone in on that? kind of fruity flavor well let me say real quick uh, whiskey hunters already hinting around at it but he says i'm not hearing any negativity to such a young whiskey mm -hmm. uh, it's already come up in the comments as well what our price point is this is a 40 dollar bottle oh, here really? yeah and it's delicious and uh, as far as our is it worth it yeah yes i would say wow. so well, yeah i would agree well it's surprising um, Sorry, it's surprising me on three different things. One, that's a great price for what we got going on here. Two, at 40%, this, yeah, I agree with you. It tastes more like I would have guessed 43. And I wouldn't have been shocked if it was a 46. So I definitely didn't think it was a 40. And then that the fact that it's 10 years, as you know, usually things that are 10 years that I love are heavily peated. <laughs> no. For me, I agree. Like the, the flavor is rich, um, lots of different flavors, lots of complexity. The only thing that I could maybe fault it on is just a little bit of thinness in the mouthfeel. Uh, but the, the fullness of flavor makes up for that, in my opinion. Mm. Mm. Did we talk about the finish yet? I headed on it a bit on my transitions. What do you have? Mm. <clears throat> Pardon me. Well, I wrote here. Actually, and I really feel this. You know, even when I try, I try not to rely on my notes too much, but sitting here, you mentioned that astringency. I feel like I had a really nice, uh, good quality whiskey sour at a nice bar. Basically, finished off that whiskey sour, and I'm just left with a nice, uh, slightly tart, slightly dry feeling in my mouth. Great description. So that like is, that. Yeah, that is 100%. I agree with you. That tartness, that dryness, that, yeah, the tartness, almost like not a sting, but that definite tartness. I agree with you 100%. And the lengthwise, uh, I would I would call it about a medium finish. Um, I'm still tasting it now. Uh, a lot of the oak, that oakiness really goes quite far. The other flavors... Um, not too long, but long enough that uh, uh, that I would say it's uh, definitely worth it in terms of the quality uh, through and through from the nose to the finish. I like this one. You mentioned you paid 40 US. I think I paid 70,000 Korean won. So that's about oh. uh, $60 US. And wow. I've, just got, I've gotten used to the expensive prices here. Um, and I would, I would agree. I would definitely say it's worth it because right now, uh, the least expensive single malt Scotch whiskey uh, would be probably from Glen Moray, and it would be about fifty dollars. Um, so not much less than this, and those ones don't have an age statement. So you're getting the ten-year-old age statement uh, for not much more. Hmm. MG ten-year-old is about seventy-five or eighty uh, eighty thousand won here. So sixty-five seventy US. Anyway, very nice. Any other comments coming in? Well, we've got uh, uh, Lloyd Fink is with us. Now, Lloyd is the beard part of Bubba and the beard. Right. Bubba is also with us because we've got Bubba and the beard and Lloyd Fink commenting. Get out. But, and by the way, you guys are going to get a mention in one of our upcoming videos. Mm, definitely. 
<laughs> we might talk about stroking the beard. Yes, we, we want you guys, we want a stroking of the beard. <laughs> That's just a teaser. That's a teaser for a future show. Um, where was I going with that? I don't know. We Yeah, as soon as the beard came up, you got completely lost. Yep. <clears throat> Either way, question while you're looking over those. So, we've had single malts from Japan. We've had single malts from Taiwan. Is there anywhere in Korea, and I've had some good Korean sake. I, I think it's sake. I don't know what they call it there. I can't remember now. But is there any kind of a... Soju? Yes, say that again. Yes, I can't so, say it, but I know. So yes, you. you're exactly um, right. I had S some of that. S-O-J-U. Yes. Yes, I had some of that when I was there. What am I saying? Yeah. Yes, too strongly. Apparently, I'm agreeing with you too strongly. Second, I meant to do this. I forgot. Yes, bring it over. Yeah. Actually, I got with I got with Mark ahead of time, and I talked about picking up a sake or something along those lines. Soju, and that's what he Boom. had me look for, yes. but I couldn't find it here. Oh, so we would we would have done the West Cork and then moved on oh, to soju. the soju. Oh, my goodness. But we didn't have it here. I do so have a couldn't. sake at home. I don't think I have a soju. I might have a soju. So that's why we ended up with the Johnny Walker no, Black that's Label. That's not a mistake. Try. Not so. a mistake at all. Now, probably this is the, the soju that you'll find uh, in most liquor stores in Canada and the U.S. Um, and that's this one. Basic Korean soju. Uh, these are about a dollar for a half bottle, 375 milliliters. Um, this is called uh, Chamisul, C-H-A-M-I-S-U-L, Chamisul, Chami, I guess, how would you say that in English? Uh, Chamisul is the name of that one. Um, now, it's 19%. If that's all they have, it's, it's, it'd be good to try once. But that's kind of like, um, it's kind of like a, a uh, mud shake type of uh, prepackaged cocktail in a sense. There's there's sugar in it. There's flavor. In it. It's not really a real deal. Uh, if you can find uh, this brand, it's called Huayo. Um This one is 100% Korean rice and uh, no no additives at all. It, it's basically like new make. And they cut it down to uh, either 53%, 40%, or 25% is uh, this one. And um, it smells like cucumber and a little bit of melon, interestingly. Hmm. Interesting. But, now, with that being said, is there anyone in Korea that you know of that's actually working on a single malt status kind of in the scotch whiskey style? I met I met a fellow recently that uh, is interested in production, um, and I think I think there are making making uh, distilling at home is not uh, not illegal here. Selling is illegal, but not making it. So I think there are a few people who have already um, made made their own. Um, single malt whiskey at home hmm. and uh actually i have uh, i bought a pot still and uh hmm. i've got some korean uh malted barley uh, i've even got some korean peat <laughs> what and i have what? these grandiose designs of um uh peating uh peating my own uh uh barley malt and i, I think I, i'm gonna even try malting my own barley Wow! At some point, and then firing up that little little uh, twenty liter pot still that I bought. Well, if you do that, you need to let us know. I will, and maybe I can even uh, send out some samples. Yeah, that'd be cool. Would We'd, you drink it though? Would you drink it? I would definitely have Scott try it. <laughs> 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 so no, but that would be good just to hear as you go through the process and what you learned and what you experience as you do that. That'd be really interesting. That'd be good for your show, actually. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in the middle of making a, a, a malt, malt roaster. Wow. So uh, I've got some, some stainless steel mesh that I've uh, uh, turned into a, a, a cone, a cone, a, a cylinder. And, um, uh, and then I bought a, 
Uh, I bought a Spitfire grill, like the uh, the slow roaster thing. So I'm going to try to jimmy that onto the uh, the cylinder uh, so that it just sort of slowly rotates over the uh, the Korean peat fire. Wow, I'm sure you won't have any problems at all with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a yeah. You're I'll gonna, do it on a rooftop. Yeah, you're gonna. You're. It's gonna be great. I think that's gonna be fabulous. No, it's gonna be great. Uh, any comments coming in on that? Hold well, on. Whiskey Six wants to know if he'd blow his own whistle for oh. his moonshining business. Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Whiskey in the Six. <laughs> no. <laughs> I see Danny. Don't worry. Danny's in there. I'm going to see hey, I, Danny soon. He's talking about some sake. L Lloyd, the beard, commented about his coin or their coins that they've gotten. And so we've had a lot of comments coming in about people oh, oh, code, oh, down. saying what coin they got. And this one we're using 168. Now that's, oh, yeah, just, your personal, that's just your personal coin. Yeah, mine's the 57 that's in my pocket. If Bart over, ever keels over, you'll get his belt that's and right. that coin. Yeah, you'll get the belt that'll last a lifetime and mend my Heinz 57 coin. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, uh, let's. um. Let, I checked let's out your website last night, and I thought it was great, and I really liked the uh, the shop. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I'm going to have you maybe try to send me uh, a couple of those uh, uh, those what do you, what do you call them? Yeah, the challenge oh, yeah, uh, challenge poker, coin poker chips challenge yeah, coins. Yeah, yeah, cool. For those yeah. watching, look at that right there. Look at that! Woo! Perfect. It's on there. I've actually yeah. got I've got one of Scotch Troopers glasses that I'm using here on the little deal. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm behind in all that. I, I need to get uh, I need to get a shirt of his, and I need to get uh, uh, the uh, challenge coin of yours. Boom. Let's move on. Are you ready? You want to move on to the Johnny Walker Black Label? We've had a few calls yes. for that, Mark. While while we are doing that and prepping and pouring ours, why don't you tell us how you got into whiskey? Okay, that's a, uh, I, I don't think we have the, the six hours that it's going to take for me to tell you. <laughs> let's, hear the, let's hear the Cliff Notes version of it. That's right. <laughs> we'll go with the Cliff Notes version. So, um, as I mentioned, my dad's Danish. So, we grew up in a home where um, Danish spirits were always on the table at birthdays and Christmas and uh, Easter and so on. And um, so the, uh, I guess the most common Danish uh, spirit uh, or from Scandinavia would be uh, uh, Aquavit. Aquavit. Have you tried that yet? It's, no. Uh, it's no, maybe, but um... it's not dissimilar to gin. Instead of being flavored with juniper, it's flavored with caraway. So that gives it a kind of a minty, um, minty kind of a grainy flavor to it, almost like licorice in a, in a sense. Anyway, so that was that would have been my first um, uh, experience with uh, distilled spirits. I never really got into beer. Uh, my dad was a, a Molson Canadian drinker. Uh, I guess in um, in the U.S. that's probably called Molson Export. I think. Okay. Um, so my friends all got into beer and we would go out and um, being a person who preferred, um, you know, the spirits end of, of liquor, uh, I would just uh, choose something off of the bar menu. And um, there's a place called the King's Head Pub in Winnipeg. And it's still there. I, hopefully they still have a good selection of whiskeys there. But uh, actually, Talisker, Lefroy, um, other one, uh, maybe Lagavulin. I'm not. Anyway, definitely Talisker and Lefroy would have been my first two uh, single malt Scotch whiskeys that I tried, and I really liked it. And the the gentleman there suggested I try it without I without ice, so that's how I drank it, and it was really uh, cheap. This would have been 1990 thereabouts. I think uh, it was maybe five dollars uh, for a ounce glass. Wow. And anyway, so that was my first experience with whiskey. Uh, fast forward, maybe I bought a bottle of uh, Johnny Walker Black at some point. Um, that might have been my first bottle of whiskey. 
And, uh, and then 2010, coming back from uh, a trip to Canada, uh, I bought a bottle of Glenmorangie Sonalta PX, uh, the first private edition. It changed my world, uh, that bottle. Um, I was hooked on the brand for a few years until uh, maybe maybe it's ago I started to check out some other other brands of um, uh, single malts, and uh, that was it. And then a trip to Canada and a Robbie Burns night, uh, trying like twenty or thirty different brands before I started the Whiskey Whistle Channel. And uh, uh, I guess that's the end of the story. That's how I got into it. And I don't even I don't even really crave beer so often unless it's really hot outside. Uh, wine I'll have with a steak now and again, but um, for me, for my body, and for my health, I feel like uh, single malt whiskey, uh, even blended blended whiskeys, Canadian whiskey, bourbon. Uh, it just seems really right for my um, uh, my body. Uh, I don't feel I don't feel drunk. I don't get hungover um, unless I really go to town on uh, uh, on on a few few bottles. Uh, I think uh, I think I now I know my limit. So anyway, that's the story. Sure. Now I noticed you poured what looked like a Johnny Walker that had been open, and then did you open a little travel size one and pour a separate one there as well? I did. Now what I was? Did. did you just want to see what the uh, nosing difference was? because this one's been open about a year um and i've only got about a third of it left so i probably should uh, uh consume that quickly or maybe decant it in a smaller uh container um so i just wanted you to notice any... do you get a difference want... in the nose i'm curious that's what i wanted to find out so this is the unopened one or the newly opened one. And, um, well, I know you guys just bought yours, so that's probably more like this one. Uh, it loses a bit of peatiness over time. So the new one, I peat than, the, than the, the already opened one. Interesting. Anyways. Now, it's funny. I haven't been back to the, the Johnny Walker Black Hugh Leon 2013 when we first started getting whiskeys and of course I've turned into a huge kind of peat head now and as I'm nosing this I, I can pick up the brine but I'm not I mean I get a very subtle subtle peat I and when I when I knew we were going to be touching on this I was thinking the peat was going to be stronger from what I remembered but the brine is forefront, and then I get a sweetness, and then I kind of get just a uh, a subtle underlaying of a like a smoky wisp of peat. Maltiness, I, I would add. There. It's almost like the peat and that brininess together with the sweetness creates a real caramel sort of flavor scent. Yeah, it's really, I, it's funny because I haven't been back to this. It's it's weird when uh, Scott mentioned that we were going to try this. I thought, wow, you're right. I haven't been back to the regular black. I've had the double black. Well, but let me let me go back in time a little bit for those that have tuned in and never, and have heard the story. So my wife went on a woman's women's cruise. Um, Is that all friends. women are on the, on the ship? Just no, women? Just her her group was Ooh. friends friends and her cousin. Sorry. Wow. So all these girls went on a cruise back in. 07, 08. Good year. And my wife comes home all excited. And she says, I got a big bottle of scotch. It was really cheap for your dad. And I said, well, that's great. But I said, my dad doesn't drink scotch. And she said, well, I guess that's more for you then because I bought you one too. And I go, I don't drink scotch. <laughs> Whenever you ever see me sitting around sipping on whiskey. <laughs> and so she's like, well, Okay. That's true. You were more like so, a Zima kind of guy. Yeah. No. Zima. <laughs> but uh, so anyway, I thought, well, she bought it. I'll drink it and try it. And, uh, at, you know, at the time there was this much water and this much 
or water and ice and this much whiskey. You really drowned in it. Yeah. And, uh, but even then I was like, okay, well, it's not that bad. And so, you know, the water started coming down to where, you know, now, now it's just a drop now and now where now it's just a drop of water, you know, or a tad, a, a smidgen, a squidge of water. Squidge. So a squidge of water. Johnny Walker black is what actually got my whiskey. I'm going to use that. Yeah, I think that, I will use a squidge. Yeah, you, a squidge is anywhere like that. This is a squidge. Yeah. It means it moves. Now, keeping that in mind, for quite a while, Johnny Walker Black was kind of my go-to or my daily scotch when I when I first got started. But it's been years since I've had it. What do you get on the nose? I get boy the like I said I point out maltiness. That was the first thing that really jumped up and grabbed me. Now I'll tell you one other story real quick. It was one night I'd had some shrimp and cocktail sauce, right? And this was several years ago as well. And I and I got me a Johnny Walker Black to have afterwards with the cocktail. No, it was later, 30 minutes later, but the, the horseradish and the cocktail sauce and the wasabi was still on my palate. I would imagine when the I, wasabi was hanging around a little bit. When I sat down with the Johnny Walker Black, I thought I had poured double black. It was so peaty, so smoky hmm. because of that, that horseradish that was on my palate. It was really a, 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 accentuating, accenting the smoke flavors. I had to go look and see that I, because I thought I thought I poured Johnny Walker Black Label, and I think this is double black. Sounds like a future show. I had to go look. We're gonna try horseradish and different whiskey. Yeah, I get a maltiness though, and a and a sour <laughs> wood really, and I don't get well. Maybe no, there is a light a light smokiness, and maybe some of the brine, like you said. Definitely get the brine. Now, the whole deal with the Johnny Walker series of anything, whether it's the the green, the gold, what did they get rid of the gold and they got the platinum now? I, I forget. But uh, the black, it's all about consistency, consistency, consistency. Yeah, right. And, uh, and I know Scott, back in the day, around Christmas, would get the blue. Now, mm. you've moved well past that, and now you pick up some extraordinary stuff. Nothing against the blue. Uh, but, I mean, you really pick up some stuff that's got some depth to it. Well, I try to pick up, make a Christmas bottle something different each something year now. Special. and go, Yeah, something special and something that's supposed to be, mm -hmm. you know, different. And I really, I lean towards uh, sherry, sherry cask whiskeys. But. Right. That's how I know that. <laughs> right. Um, what do you have on the flavor? I find the longer you hang on to it in your mouth, you get that smoky component starts to uh, sort of come through your nose a little bit. Mm. Mm. There's a real kind of a kickback, I find. Smoky, something hits me uh, right at the back of the throat, up in my nose area, nasal area. Very much so. Here's what I get now with this. It's got to be 40% ABV, right? Yep, 40%. Right. And it comes in weak to me now. Um, when I first, when I was brand new into scotch, I love this. I, I actually thought it was kind of strong. As we've been around the block a few times now, it comes in a little light to me. And it's weird. The, the forefront of it is extremely almost wispy and mysterious. It's like I can't peg it down. But you're right. After that swallow occurs, it's almost mm -hmm. like it, it makes itself known. I get a uh, I get a toffee richness, a caramel, a little bit of the peat lingers around. And you're right. It, it's almost like it climbs up into the sinuses a little bit, and I'm smelling it rather than mm -hmm. tasting it. And, uh, and that's what... That's the word I was looking for, sinuses. Yeah, and it surprises me now. As soon as you said that, I thought, you're right. I'm getting a lot more of this on the finish, kind of, than I am on the yeah. forefront. As, uh, uh, as Ralphie would say, it's the development is where this is uh, a real uh, winner. Now, that is perfect. You're right. We love Ralphie, and you're exactly right on that. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Or for you. I totally agree. It, it rather it rather comes in like a lady. I know that's a little sexist. <laughs> it comes in like a lady. Good song. And um, 
and when you when you swallow, then you really get the 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 force uh, of uh, the black label. That is spot on and very Something very like a lady goes out like a man. Yeah, very unique though. You're right. I mean, mm. as soon as the the swallow takes place, it really kind of explodes. Mm. I know that this is a. I mean, this is a favorite of a lot of people out there uh, for blends, and uh, and I, I do like it. Um, I recent well brought home a bottle of uh, um, what was it? Um, teachers, mm. and I have to say, I, I like I like the teachers uh, over this one for its its peaty oomph, um, but. Uh, that's a good balance um, of all of these sweet and smoky flavors and um, uh, the delicacy plus a little bit of strength uh, as long as you, you wait long enough. You're right. I like the teachers as well. Scott, what do you have? Uh, did you have anything you wanted I, to add? Well, uh, you had a good point, and it's been so long since I've been to this, I'd remembered it and early on really having a punch. And, and semen stronger. And now that we've had so many more whiskeys, 40%, mm. this is really light on the palate. It's lighter right, yeah. than I remember. Um, the maltiness and the oakiness and that smokiness. And I got just a slight lime sweetness with it a little bit ago when you guys were talking. Um, I was trying to think of what it was and all of a sudden lime popped in there. But mm. <clears throat> um, it's definitely different than I remember. Now, I, I want to try this older one that's been open for about a year and see if there's any, any real differences there. Yeah, I'm curious. By the way, we've got, uh, my water. we've got Scott's quote back here. And I believe the rock, the rock is a tourist attraction. I believe this has to be a little bit of a trick that it's actually from the movie The Rock. Right? Yeah. And it's all about yeah. Alcatraz. It's all about Alcatraz. And it's, uh, it's uh, was that Keanu that was in there? <laughs> no, I know. It's Nicolas Cage. And? Ah, uh, that movie, right. Yeah, Sean, Sean Connery. Connery. <laughs> the Rock is a tourist attraction. <laughs> mm. <laughs> which, is, which is odd. By the way, I like Keanu. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, his own movies. Yeah. I need to see John Wick, too. John Wick, too, looks yeah, good. Oh, yeah. His weapons control looks I want to see that, too. I think. So here's what I have to say. Yes, please. Uh, do, do not, do not leave your Johnny Walker black for a year and think it's going to uh, be as good as it was. Uh, it really loses a lot of uh, uh, the oomph. Really? Uh, really? It's, yeah, it's just a, a kind of a generic, uh, nothing special kind of a flavor now. Huh. Well, Scott, that means we need to drink up your bottle whenever I come over. That's fine. <laughs> $37. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he doesn't want me diving into his... Uh... Yeah, you can have the cheap ones. All How about that Compass Box Circus I see up there? Oh, here. That, that kick that we like is gone. Yeah, he'll be. I'll be like, is that Johnny Walker or is that uh, Compass Box Circle? No, nope. Circus. That's Here, Johnny black Walker label. Black. <laughs> <laughs> he won't let me get near. I've been coveting on all his Compass Boxes that are in that plastic protection area up there. I mean, you got like. Oh, I got to see this. Yeah, yeah. If you look up there, he's got. Oh, I, I, uh huh. I see it. I see it there. I know. Yeah. If you look, you've got box after box that have come in. Those are empty. Oh no, they're 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 sealed. I don't believe that. Not been broken. He loves the design. I I think you're a big aficionado of Compass Box design work, which I got to admit, I do. so yeah. am I. Yes. I mean, they're they're speaking about Compass Box being out of the box. Hey, let me point out, Mark, real quick. We've had two comments. Jesse Voison, first of all, he says, you can repair your old Johnny Walker Black by adding a splash of Ardbeg tin. Mm. And Frank Lampard says, pour some Laphroaig back in it to revise it. Yeah, I can see that. Wow. Uh, yeah, revive, sorry. That would work. That would be cool. I don't, have, I don't have any at the ready, but, but it's Bring really it. interesting. You really do lose. You lose that peaty uh, kick. Uh, when the bottle has been open for that long. So 
Well, I'm, I think I'll have to save that for uh, for cocktails or something. Yeah, I'm really glad you did that. I saw you pouring both, and I thought, what is he doing? And that was a great little experiment you ran there. I, I thought, why not? You know? Yeah, very cool. Now, I think you two gentlemen go a long way back, don't you? We do. Back. Uh, how and when did you meet? All right. We, uh, we met uh, at the office. I was, he'd been on a couple years and I was brand new and we were partnered up on, dare I say, a project. Sure. <laughs> and uh, we have partnered up. So like, like he's coming clean. We, we have our, the company we work for has very strict social media policies. Right. So we can't so we're, discuss yeah, wait till we retire. Yes. Yeah. When we retire we in a few years and then right. we'll have a lot of stories. Right. So we come into the company and, and, uh, and we're, we're partnered up and uh, like out of the, out of the, like he makes a declarative statement. First of all, I love star Wars and I don't mean a little bit. I mean a lot, <laughs> right? He's like, I love it a lot. I collect stuff. I got stuff from FAO shorts that I'll never even open. I mean, these are like giant tauntauns. And I'm thinking, wow, I love Star Wars. Then he's like, second of all, I come from Western Kansas, and I'm a big fan of the Denver Bronco football team because most guys around here are Kansas City Chiefs football fans. Well, little did he know, I actually moved to Kansas from Denver, Colorado. I, too, was a big Bronco fan. I lay this out. I lay out the Star Wars deal, and then I make the the first thing I've done that I, I somehow mention like Luke Skywalker's home planet of Tatooine. And for 22 years, I've been mocked and cajoled and made fun of because he goes, "You mean Tatooine?" And I'm like, "Yeah, it's the same thing." He goes, "No, you called it Tatooine, like it was somebody's tattoo on their arm." Yeah, he was like, are you mentally challenged or did you not see the movie as much? Yeah, so right off the bat, it was like kismet. It was kismet and we're off and running. The only thing that I didn't jump on board right away was cigars. So he's, he's always enjoyed a good cigar and I'm like Mr. No Smoke kind of guy. So do you like cigars? I had one uh, two nights ago. There you go. What did you it have? Nothing special. It was a, 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 a I guess, a, the, a, I think it's Dominican, right? Partagas Dominican um, a cigar with the Cameroon wrapper. Well, the wrapper was uh, uh, flaking off, so I just th threw the wrapper away. Um, but it, it was, uh, it was, it was a nice smoke. It's been a long time since I had a, a, a good stick, so that was nice to enjoy. <laughs> So you're good. He'll break out these great cigars, and it looks like he's just like, like captured the wolf's lair or something. I mean, he, lo <laughs> he looks like he just stormed like the bastions and survived, you know, the Battle of the Bulge. And I'm like, all right, you look tough. I, I like the cigar you got going there. Let's, let's go back quite a while. We had a question mark. Claire <laughs> asked, "What's up with the butterflies?" Go Claire. That's now, Claire the third. The butterflies. Yeah. I just I just love butterflies. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. Uh, I like to put up a little paper mache type <laughs> of uh, on the wall. Uh, actually, no. To to be honest, uh, <laughs> my daughters all have birthdays within uh, two weeks of each other. Um, uh, my second, uh, her birthday is January twenty eighth. Uh, my first, her birthday is February first. And then our little one, our third, our third daughter, uh, we have three daughters. Our third daughter, May, her birthday was uh, February 12th. Wow. Uh, uh, you guys, I know you guys asked me to leave that, but um, can I sacrifice? There we go. A banner attached to the wall uh, with Yay! some butterflies and uh, yeah. Anyway, we like it. I have two boys. Uh, boys. They, they stick so well to the wall. If I pull them off, it pulls off the wallpaper. So they're going to stay there for a while. Perfect. I have two boys that have birthdays in February as well, and so does somebody else have a February birthday. Moving on. Yeah. Yeah. You won't say it's the eighth. Oh, <laughs> Happy birthday! Dang! I thought it was the eighth. When is it? Ninth. Oh, I was off by a day. <laughs> now, I, I'm 
I'm guessing I'm guessing that you guys are maybe a year or two older than me. Um, but uh, starting to I'm starting to get a little bit of gray going on there. Yes. Year two. I'm afraid to grow up a full patch uh, on the corners of my uh, of my lips. Now I'm I'm 47. 1970. And, uh, 1970. My, my hair started turning gray when I was Five. 30. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, my beard my beard used to be my savior. I still it was all black, and now it's about 80 percent gray with some shades of black in there. It's like 50 shades of black. Yeah. Right. Well, you gray. 50 <laughs> shades of gray is my beard. He started going not gray but white when you were like 30. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, it was real early. I figured he got scared a lot is what happened. <laughs> um, he had something one, one like my, scared uh, him. Mm, One of my immediate family members also had a similar kind of early graying sort of thing going on. Yeah. I won't mention his name, although he is watching. Um, but uh, he does a good job. My, my mother is actually a hair designer, hair salon owner by trade. So my, my mom takes care of his uh, uh, his color, so he gets a natural, uh, around about the same color as mine uh, usually. Well, one thing but, I, uh, I, I've never seen him. I haven't seen him with a, a full beard of late. I wonder how his beard's doing uh, with the gray. Well, see, one thing I've always liked about him is as soon as it started to go, he was like, "Whatever it is, it is. I don't care." Mm. And it's still there. Right. So that is true. I don't I've care got, what color I've got it like is. Like a bald baldness working in here. That's why you wear a hat. Oh, that man. is true because I got this like fading. <laughs> I've got a retreat that's happening you right gotta, up. You got to rock that thing. Yeah, that's right. So there's some yeah. retreating going on down the middle road. <laughs> I'm really happy to know that you guys that we're all uh, gentlemen. We're all guys of the '70s. That's good to know. You bet. You bet. Uh, the '80s man, the the t the Fall Guy, the TV shows. I don't know what you got up in Canada. Oh, up in Winnipeg. Have you uh, speaking 18? of uh, Fall Guy? Uh, is there a new MacGyver coming out? You know, I heard I, there yeah, was. I've seen that. I think it kind of flopped. Didn't it flop though? Oh, I don't know. I think I their duct it. tape only goes so far. <laughs> now, a few weeks ago, you guys had Rob from Toronto on. Yes. Mm -hmm. Whiskey in the six. Whiskey in the six. Now, and he Ooh. said, or he didn't say, we had samples of uh, Glen Goyne 25. Right. Which spurred me. I went out and bought Glen Goyne 18 when I was in Dallas a couple of weeks ago, and our review mm -hmm. of it will be coming up pretty soon. But uh, that's all I'm going to say about that one. Wow. Keeping a little secret, a little close to the best. Hey, let's get let's get a couple questions in. Yeah, bring them quick. in, bring them in, bring them in. And I think you addressed this earlier, Mark, before Cato turned in, tuned in. But love wants, the Cato. Yep, Cato wants to know what you do that allows you to sit around and drink at Monday on Monday at noon. Yes, <laughs> you need to be like you. Okay, well, uh, I, I was I prepared I prepared for this question. I knew it was going to come up. <laughs> um, it just it just so happens that, that my wife is uh, independently wealthy. Wow. And uh, I really don't need to work. Holy. No, I'm I'm just I, I wish I wish that were true. No, that's not true at all. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm an ESL uh, educator. I work at a university. Um, so I teach I teach English as a second language uh, at a university. And in fact, uh, actually, I can just sort of pan this. Uh, I live in uh, university provided housing, and my university like, is that like a dorm room? <laughs> it's no, they 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 rent, they own a uh, they own a couple of uh, condos uh, nearby. So here, all right, we're on on the move here. Yes. Uh, so I'm in Seoul now, and um, that that tower you see there, that's a. Uh, that's my university's clock tower. And uh, that I work in there, that tall one. This is called cool. Sejong University. Um, it's, it's been around for about 60 or 70 years. And um, uh, 
they have a, a full program from under undergraduates undergraduate study all the way to PhD. No medical school, but uh, I think that's in the works. There's a new building being erected, so I think they're going to end up with a a medical school or uh, uh, being added. Anyway, so the Korean university year starts in March, goes until the end of June, and uh, and then reconvenes for the second semester in September until uh, basically Christmas. So I'll get two months, um, two months in the winter and two months in the summer instead of a, a, a long summer vacation like they have in uh, USA and Canada. So the school year starts on Thursday. So this worked out really well because if this was next week, I wouldn't be able to do this. Mm. So thanks, gents, for uh, accommodating. Very cool. That worked out great. Mm -hmm. Very neat. Thank you for showing <laughs> a little shot. That, that was beautiful, actually. Nice campus. It's okay, nice next campus, question. Yeah. Next question, George Kaplan asked, can Mark recommend a Chinese sake if a Korean can't be found? Wow. So I think he's looking uh, here. That's he's a, looking here in the States if you can't find... A soju. Yeah, or what's a good... Yeah, so good. The, the, the Chinese Chinese white spirit is known as pai, uh, pai jin. Um, Paiju, Paiju. B-A-I-J-U is the, uh, the name of the similar spirit produced in, in China. And um, uh, I think probably, um, I, I have tried it. I don't remember the name of the brand. Uh, my Chinese is really terrible, uh, but um, I think if uh, if they just ask their local um, local shop for the recommendation, there may only be one or two um, uh, paiju on hand. But I really don't know uh, brands or um, or types or so on. But I think at, just as a general rule, just like uh, just like whiskey. The higher the ABV, the better the product in general. So if I if I was going to be buying some some Chinese uh, paiju, I'd be looking for uh, fifty percent and up um, uh, for maximum you know flavor potency, and then add a bit of water or ice if I need. Very good. Now a couple questions. Where where do you think, from your perspective, whiskey's headed? Do you have any predictions? Uh, that's a really good, good question. I think, um, globalization is going to continue. So, uh, there's a, uh, there's a producer in Winnipeg that's going to be starting to produce whiskey very soon. Uh, they've got a column still, I think. So that's going to be probably more like a traditional Canadian whiskey that they'll be making. They've got vodka and uh, gin on the market already called tall grass. If you're in Winnipeg, tall grass vodka, tall grass uh, gin, look for those products. I think the distillery is known as Capital K, oddly enough, Capital K Distillery. So they're going to have a, a single malt, one, uh, single, a blended Canadian whiskey out, I'm sure, within a couple of years. So I think that's going to continue. Um, you asked about Korean producers of single malt. I'm sure that's going to happen within the decade. That would be cool. And I think we'll see a lot more um, regionalism going on. Um, so buy, buying local whiskey will be an option no matter where you are in the world. Good. Uh, I think um, uh, Scotch whiskey will continue to be the, uh, the epitome of whiskey. Prices will continue to climb. Uh, I think that the 10 and 12 and 15 and maybe 18 year olds I think the prices will settle down uh, and the availability will return. Uh, older whiskeys like 21 and up, that's going to be uh, really pricey probably for the next uh, decade or or just forever. Sure. Um, Being in as, a, as a quick aside, I just, I just found a bottle of Glenfiddich 21-year-old orange bottle. 
there's an orange case and the, the color has changed to an orange, like a bright orange packaging. And the ABV was increased to 43.2%. Okay. Uh, I picked that up for 180,000 won, so about 160 US um, for the 21 year old. In, uh, in Ontario, in Toronto, uh, that's $440 Canadian. Wow. And um, uh, that's probably gonna be the last uh, kind of older whiskey that I buy because the prices are just nuts. I just can't, uh, I can't do it unless I get a sample from, a, a, um, from the distillery themselves. Sure. Or uh, a, a donation from a, a subscriber, then I, I might consider that, but I, I will not pay. Um, sure. I think $10 per year is about the maximum I can afford. 18 years, 180 bucks. Sure. 21 years, 210 bucks. I can't handle much more than that. Now, being in, in being in Korea, do you have good access to some of the Japanese whiskeys or the Cavalons from Taiwan or even like some of the Sullivan's Cove coming up from Australia? Do you see those or not so much? Absolutely not. You know, it's really uh, Koreans are hooked on Scotch whiskey. Um, bourbon is just starting to uh, peak peak up in sales. Um, Irish whiskey, uh, Jameson, uh, Bushmills, these are readily available. But Japanese whiskey is not on the retail market at all. Um, Taiwanese. Um, not available except in special shops. Uh, I have never seen any Australian, Tasmanian, or um, available yet. Got it. Um, is, is there still a lot of bias? Indian, Indian whiskey also really not available here. All right. Is there still a lot of bias against Japan due to all the World War II stuff that went on? Is that why maybe, or is it just that it's rare? Yeah, there's still a little bit of bias there. However, the the Suntory basic blended uh, Japanese is available in supermarkets. Okay. Uh, there's that uh, kind of a funny new brand that came on the market called uh, I W A I. Uh -huh. I yeah. E Y. E Y. We uh, just reviewed that. Yeah. Yeah. So that just hit the shelves. Um, uh, but it's really overpriced, in my opinion. It's like seventy dollars uh, oh, here. Wow. Well, there's uh, two. There is two different ones now. We bought, or you bought the one. There's like a thirty dollar yep. entry level one. Um, it's a black, black labeled bottle. And then there's a second one that that um, I forget what the difference is. And even here, it's fifty or sixty dollars. So that might be the one that you're seeing. Uh, maybe so. Maybe so. <laughs> um, so that hit shelves, not available. The Japanese single malt is not on shelves here, except in, in specialist retailers like the malt shop. I often give them a plug, so I'm giving them a plug now. That's where I bought this one uh, from the malt shop in Kangnam, uh, just like Kangnam style Kangnam. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you like that song? I are you bad, of course. <laughs> Uh, anyway, they have a good selection. They have, um, they've got Hakushu and uh, uh, Yama, Yamazaki and some Hibiki on shelves. They also have some uh, Kavalan. Um, the I think they have the uh, Solist Fino Sherry um, and maybe one other uh, Kavalan available. And a few of the blended Japanese as well. So that's available at the malt shop. Um, so you can find that there, but you, you, you'd think that it would be fully available here. I'm only like a few hundred, few hundred miles from Japan. Uh, I would have expected to be able to get the Yamazaki 2013, uh, Sherry that, uh, that won best of the year, whatever from Jim Murray a couple of years ago. Sure. Not available. Um, the uh, Vino Barique from Cavalon, I think I did see it here. It was $600, they were asking. Wow. Not going to happen. Yeah. 
No. Well, hey, let's um. Questions? What, well, I was going to say we got a couple things, but let's start to wrap it up. Probably we're we're well mm. over our hour mark, which yeah. these things go fast. Yeah, that tends to happen. Lately. Um, on the black label, is right. it, let's do. Uh, I mean, what's our impressions? Is it worth it? Thirty-seven dollars a oh, bottle. Oh, totally. I say yes. You oh, is it good? Absolutely. A good look, Absolutely. Good I I really like it. I'm drinking. I did. I finished this one while we were uh, uh, talking together. It's great. Uh, just as I mentioned, don't keep it too long. Uh, get it open and probably consume it within about six months or, or so. And I think that's probably best. You really lose that PD punch uh, keeping it for over a year. Uh, like and let that. me point it's out real quick. I, I found the comment and it was Jeremy Foster who uh, commented and said we needed to do Johnny Walker Black. So thank you, Jeremy. Way to go. Uh, when you, if you are watching or when you do watch this, um, and we will do a Thanks, stand. Jeremy. We'll do a standalone review of this as well, a pre-recorded show. Yeah, we need to. So is the beef um, is the beef still in? Uh, I haven't heard from the B for a while. I see Danny. He was. Danny is still now, in there, East Coaster. Um, Scotchology has been with us, and they commented that our shows have become a Sunday tradition. Oh, yeah. um, we uh -huh. actually have Scotchology is slated to be on the show with us uh, live from, uh, I think they're in gonna be gonna or no, they're going to be in Seattle for a tasting, um, but they're out of Minneapolis, Minnesota area. Really? <clears throat> but uh, March 19th, they'll be on the show with us. Yeah, March 19th, they're going to come on. And they are arranging for us to get samples of a Bryn, the French whiskey. Wow. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Sounds good. Bryn. Bryn? Uh, yeah, Bryn. And, Bryn. and then um, one of the Aaron uh, cask finishes that we did. Well, our, we haven't reviewed the port cask finish Aaron yet. They are sending us, I think it's the Sauternes finish or the Amarone. Might wow. be the Amarone finish. Like the way Aaron. you talk. And then one other comment from Claire. Um, I don't think the third. I don't think Claire the third has been the only one to comment again about our rise shootout. Mm. I've got the whiteboard. I'm getting ready to draft yeah. up our bracket on it. This we, is we are getting ready to go. This is the promise that keeps on. What are you putting in there? Us. We're gonna have 16 different rides. 16? Oh, yeah. We got to break it out. Into oh, this, my God. Uh, four on four on four on four culminating. Yeah, then, we're going to do it like a sweet 16. They'll, uh, the winners will advance and face off against each other to the championship. Oh, oh, we keep talking about I it. Had 11, I had 11 Glenn Morangy on, on the table once, and that was hard. How can you do 16? We're going to break well, it out over several days. That's been part of the problem is we cannot imbibe on the days that we work. So we're trying to work it out and see how we're going to do it. It may, it may culminate in the very final four being in a live tasting. Mm. Maybe we talked about that because we thought that would be good. It would be fun. And to be quite honest, when we go live, there's no editing. <laughs> it just posts. All right. Now let me ask one question. Will Canada be represented in your rye shootout? One hundred percent. We have well, all right. the Crown Royal Northern Harvest Rye is and Masterson's. in the list. Great. And That's Masterson's, yeah. yes. But no, it's not a hundred percent of them are Canadian. Rye. No, he said represented. Yeah, but represented. you sounded like you were saying a hundred percent of them were Canadian. No, one hundred percent they'll be represented. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, 100. Right yeah, oh, yeah, they're definitely represented. Yeah, I got to tell you that uh, we were probably our first big bump was three months b before Murray calls out the Crown Royal Northern Harvest Rye as his best whiskey. We'd reviewed Ooh. it, Murray. Did you say? Murray. You hit the nail on the head at the right time. Did you say a first name with it? I don't say Murray because I always mess up and say Bill Murray. That's what I'm <laughs> Yeah. Jim. Yeah, yeah, I know it's yeah, Jim, okay. but I always want to say Bill Murray, and obviously it's not Bill. It's not a Caddyshack thing. <laughs> but yeah, whenever I throw out Murray in a oh, hurry, yeah. I always say Bill Murray instead. I'm always thinking Sunday Night Live. But yeah, when Jim Murray, uh, we'd been three months ahead, and it was funny. I was at his house. We picked up a bunch of crowns, and we were going to watch a movie, probably uh, The Deal with Keanu. Boom. No, we were yeah. The Walking Dead. No, I was making up something that was more entertaining than The Walking oh. Dead. And we open up the Northern Harvest Rye thinking the 
the cheapest one we got, the $20 bottle, is not going to be too too interesting. And I was like, whoa. And he was like, whatever. And I try, and then he tried it, and he was like, wow, that is good. It's unique. So that'll be in there. Mm. We'll see. Great. Hey, now, see can I give stand. a quick plug for what I'm doing right now? Say again? May, may, I, may I give a quick plug for what I'm doing on my channel right oh, now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's how we're going to close out, and I was going to have you go ahead and give right. your address, your Twitter handle, and your, your blog oh, page. You, you bet. Do it. Go. Thank you. All right. So right now on the Whiskey Whistle YouTube channel, I'm featuring Canadian whiskeys. So the Canadian whiskey series will continue for another uh, three episodes, three more uh, videos. Uh, I just did... Um, I did a Yukon single malt whiskey from two brewers, Yukon single malt whiskey. So that was uh, release three and release four. Uh, so those have come and passed. And then upcoming is uh, JP Weiser's red letter 2014 release from George, um, George in Ontario. Thank you very much, George, for that. And, uh, and also the JP Weiser's 18 year old will come up uh, that's uh, for 150, 151 uh, episodes on my channel. Uh, that'll wrap up the series. Now, the uh, the YouTube channel, as I mentioned, Whiskey Whistle. Uh, just have a look for that one. Uh, W-H-I-S-K-Y. Not, not, no E on that one. Whiskey Whistle. That's the YouTube channel. Twitter also, Whiskey Whistle. At Whiskey Whistle for Twitter and Instagram. There's a Facebook page as well. Please... Uh, Please join. Please uh, like that page for me. That would be a big help. Um, for the Koreans watching, there's also a neighbor blog. So uh, Whiskey Whistle uh, on the neighbor blog. Just search for Whiskey Whistle. You'll find it. The Korean For the Korean watchers, uh, Whiskey Whistle. Uh, if you look for Whiskey Whistle, you'll find that on, on neighbor blog. I've got a couple of days yet to wait until I can switch my uh, my website. I'm going to switch that to uh, I think to um, uh, to WordPress soon. The website is currently run by Register.com. I'm going to switch it up. It, it's still there. I haven't touched it for a while, but I'm going to uh, make some big changes there. Have a look for that one. WhiskeyWhistle.com. Thank you very much. Uh, Gentlemen. Perfect. We love it. One of our big things for everybody out there is the whole whiskey fabric, all of us coming together. The whiskey and, fabric. Uh, yeah, just the pleasure of having you come on the show from Korea is fabulous. Um, we love this this whole world reach that goes on with whiskey all around the globe. Yeah, we just we just love it. So thank you so much for coming on our show. I'm really glad I could I could I could I could join you. I'm so happy that you invited me. You had kind of mentioned that a few months ago, and it didn't work out till now. But that's great. Uh, so, for both of you, it's a pleasure. And uh, uh, if I can just mention quickly, uh, my first YouTube whiskey experience was uh, uh, with a person I mentioned previously. The second channel that I checked out and really enjoyed was yours. Uh, so, um, in, uh, you know, anyway, it's just great for me to be here and, uh, to, to have a, a drink with you. It's almost like you're right across the table from me. So that's really cool. 100%. That's what we talk about, brother. Cheers, gentlemen. Bringing in and right across the, the table. Air. Clink. All right. Hey, <laughs> stay on the, stay right. on the chain or stay on. Yeah. We're going to hang up. We're going to stop the We're going to stop the live, live show, but hang with great. us for a bit. Thanks to everybody right. that joined. Thanks to everybody that joined in. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot, everyone. All right. Thanks for joining us. Scotch it, you Scotch gods. Salancha. Dummies. Salancha. Dummies. <laughs> <laughs>